next order of business, if you'll let me move on. <laughs> Uh, fiscal court has already approved that bonds for all the uh, constitutional <coughs> officers and uh, other officials. Upon doing so, we also have to approve the surety of the actual company just to make it uh, legitimate. Uh, so I thought we'd better put that in a matter of fiscal court order book. If I could get a, a, an approval to approve Ohio Casualty Insurance Company, that's the company that we bought our bonds from as a matter of record. A motion to approve Ohio Casualty as a surety. Um, the motion has been made by Jerry Hahn. We get a second. <coughs> what, what is it exactly? You're approving the company. Some people use second, but yeah, 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 not discussion. Some people use, I guess, the reason that that is in place. Some people have used creative ways to prove the surety on the bonds. Is this what you're saying, Matthew? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the court's supposed to approve the surety, the bonds. Yeah. Yeah. You approve the amounts, yeah. but the company has not been approved technically because we, we hadn't gotten them all signed and back because we just got sworn in last Tuesday. Right. But it's right. the same company you used last year. Same right? company you yes. used last year. Yeah. Yes. Everybody understand? Yes. He's got a puzzle look on his face. Your Ohio Casualty Insurance Company, it could be Joe Wyman. XYZ company. Right, I understand that. You want to make sure that they're a, a, a reputable company. Actually, Ohio Casualty is a, 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 a Liberty Mutual. <coughs> so it's a big outfit and a plus company. All approved, say aye. Aye. Disapproved? I don't you care. A second. A second with Jeff? That's just a formality you have to do to make sure that you cover yourself. I don't know what. Somebody's beat the system somewhere. You know that. Next, uh, sheriff has uh, sent over uh, sheriff's official receipt for property tax bills. We need to enter that a matter of record. No, uh, no uh, fiscal court uh, motion necessary on that. And also the sheriff's official receipt for uh, uh, the limestone, sand, and gravel property as well. As a matter of public record, exception. Uh, sheriff has also presented. Uh, as you know, there's a new sheriff in town, and he has uh, reshuffled some of his office and some of his staff. And uh, I was, he's lost. Sheriff, why don't you just give up, get up, and give us a little presentation of who's gone, and maybe. And okay, uh, recent retirements that we've had. Uh, I know you all are aware of Keith Green, uh, John Thomas Fulkerson retired, uh, Matt Thomas retired, and the. Uh, course the sheriff then we play. Uh, so in that mix I've restructured the department in that uh, I have a chief deputy Raymond Penarola which is listed on there and all the promotions were promoted to sergeant. Uh, we have two team leaders and uh, two night sergeants so we run two crews that work opposite of each other uh, once every eight days, they overlap to where the whole department works. On those days, we do training and serve papers. Um, the other people that were promoted on uh, one of the team leaders is Jason Allison, who was a detective. Um, the other team leader is Caitlin Matthews, who was uh, previously a night supervisor. Uh, Mike Clark be a night sergeant and Dickie Jones is a night sergeant. Um, in doing that we lost a detective that was promoted up so we had to replace a detective and uh, that detective will be uh, Mike Kameski. Uh, I would like to note that uh, all the guys in the department picked those positions with the exception of chief deputy which I chose. Uh, we more or less had an internal election and the uh, officers picked those people to be in those positions. Uh, so that was uh, one of the major things that we did to, to get the office started. Uh, we've got a bunch of tasks we're trying to accomplish. Uh, we're going through our vehicles, uh, checking the maintenance and the uh, accumulation of mileage. 
to give you an accurate report of the situation of the vehicle fleet. Um, it's a continuous battle because we're operating about a half million miles a year within the department. So with that in mind, you know you're going to have to replace vehicles every year. Uh, I didn't put anything in my budget for vehicles, and so that's something that we're going to have to, to work with and address whether we want to uh, uh, put uh, maintenance in or replace new ones. Uh, but I'm going to give you an accurate account of our fleet so that you can see. I think the whole fleet is actually in fiscal court's name. Yes. So they're, they're your all vehicles. And uh, I want you all to be aware of, of, of where we're at on that. Uh, we're also uh, wanting to get accredited which would should reduce our insurance premium uh, if we uh, accomplish that. And I've spoken with several sheriffs in the state that are accredited, and I have copies of their policies. And uh, we're going to be reviewing those and adopting that policy, their parts of their policies to fit our department. And uh, uh, when we do that, part of the accreditation I've spoken with the previous sheriffs is to uh, uh, some of the things that you have to do is building updates. And uh, one of those things would be to uh, uh, enclose the foyer inside our department. Uh, they do a premises check and check the security of the facility. And one of those things would be enclosing. And what I'm looking at is giving you up front what I'm looking at doing down the road is going to be a fairly major expense. Sure, we just want to hear about that. We don't hear about. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know where I, where, where I'm gonna be coming from because I'm gonna be coming to you since you all own the building. <laughs> so, uh, uh, also uh, inside the courthouse, uh, what I'm looking at doing is we, we're having some of the equipment's outdated, which you have to work with the administrative office of the courts. The, they're still running some old video equipment and it was it was outdated when it was put in I don't know why they did that uh, everybody's even the smallest men at March gone to digital and it's much less expensive uh, so and part of their facility plan they're looking at doing some technology work that they have some money in for and uh, what I'm wanting to do initially that area back there was where the control room is in the courthouse was listed as a break room I think and then some security person came in and decided that that initially that that area was supposed to be the monitor room was supposed to be at the metal detector in that workstation and if we could come up with the money to move those, that equipment out to the front we could save a person it's we're having to staff two people where we could staff one and uh, you know as well as I do that, that the labor costs accumulate. Uh, you can it wouldn't take long to, to be able to switch that out and pay for itself. The sheriff, the, the Kelly Littlefield, it, it kind of explained why he, uh, you're going two dollars and seven cents an hour. Yeah. Well, a whole a whole lot of the things that, that I'm doing are based on fairness, and the perception in the past between the guys was that. Uh, uh, the courthouse supervisor was making the same thing as the guys on on the road, actually a little more money, and uh, they didn't feel that that was fair, and I didn't either, uh, because the majority of the bailiffs are at a substantial rate lower than the guys that are working the road, and uh, uh, there's a two dollar gap between the supervisor that is a patrol deputy and the patrol, so they're basically making two dollars more an hour, and I figured that we would do the same thing in the courthouse to make it fair that. That's bailiff, technically you're out of your budget anyway. That would yes. That doesn't have yes. to be on. But I mean, I, I like you all got. I like you all to know what I'm doing, and and be Rest open with it, and together we can make it uh, a, a great department. So does that put him as he's, he's supervisor, a like one of your? Uh, just uh, pay wise wise well if it says, explains anything to you the the person holding that position before was making three dollars <coughs> an hour and what he's going to be making okay yeah. so
So we, we're paying him less to do the same job. And that's, that was going to be my question. How does he rate compared to the guy? Two dollars more an hour than, than, what the, he'll than, be than the bailiffs, the, the people that he supervised. And that fellow was uh, the supervisor before? Kelly Littlefield, he's a retired police but, officer. But the, the guy that he replaced, I can see his face right now. Buddy Lee? No, oh, no, Buddy John Thomas. Focus. Oh, JT. JT. Yes. Yeah. But but the one there another fellow that was actually in charge. Glenn. 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 Yeah. Yes. No, yes. And then JT took his spot for a couple. Of months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Glenn was the one there. What no. what? I, there's a new house bill out. Uh, house bill. I think it's 362, to where sheriff's departments and sheriff's department only can hire police officers that retired from that will receive clip money. So like our officers that receive clip money that after they retire you can hire them back and you don't have to pay retirement you don't have to pay health insurance uh, because they're already getting it through the system and that was something that the kentucky sheriff's association pushed through and it's an asset to departments to hire and what i'm doing is trying to trying to use those guys in the courthouse and to serve papers so uh, i ought to be able to get uh, with with what I lost in retirement, I would be able to get three or four people for two people. So uh, it's a little slower because there's a whole lot of paperwork involved, but uh, I've got paperwork submitted on two different people right now. So we're in the process of rebuilding and getting those spots filled back up and, and making changes in a bunch of different areas, and we're just taking it one bite at a time. So, but we're getting there. I've got a whole list of things we're going to get done. <laughs> And it brings you up to date where we're at. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. This court is in motion to accept <coughs> this, these recommendations from the Chair. Thank you, Bernard. Second by Jerry Hahn. Any further discussion? All approved, say aye. Aye. Uh, yeah. Disapproved? Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> That's all the business I have on my agenda. You guys have anything? Anybody else have anything on the report? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to bring you off to speed a little bit on a uh, notification system that we're going to implement called Code Red. <laughs> and uh, you'll be you'll be hearing a lot about it on January 20th. That's when we're going to have a start our media blitz, and I'm going to go on WBRT and talk about that. And we're going to invite Joe to do that from an EMA perspective, though he doesn't know that yet. Um, and this is going to replace what Magistrate Lear did for us. He uh, developed a, a notification system that we could use for texting. This enhances that because now we have texting and phone calls. And what that'll do for the community, folks will sign up for it, and that's how you'll get your NOAA weather alerts. They'll come directly from the NOAA weather service. And you have to sign up for it. You'll have to sign up for it, yes. And that's, that's what this media blitz is really going to be about. That's one aspect of it for the community. The second part of it that's going to benefit us is we're going to have, and I'm creating those now, we'll have a, a sheriff area or a group and a Barstown police group and an EMA group and when we have a, a an unfortunate incident, mass casualty incident or officer involved shooting incident or hazmat, then what we can do is actually send that information out to the, the subscribers via text or phone call or both. And then Josh Kamick and Logan Spalding are helping me work on the map. Um, on our mapping for public safety, which we know about the address and that's part of that as well. And what we will be able to do with the next CAD that we're going to put in, our configurated dispatch, is that map will be able to, we can actually draw polygons on that map, and if we want to notify a group of people within a one mile, two mile radius, we can actually do it that way as well. So Code Red will be starting for us January 20th is, is when it will actually be ready to go live. And that's when we'll start our media blitz and get folks ready. Main thing for me is I want to make sure it's ready to go by storm season. So that's just to kind of what's give you a little. The, what's control. the cost on that code red? That's what I called Joe yesterday. Kind we of paid eleven thousand dollars for that, and for we're, one time fee mm -hmm, for one year. I think it's one year, yeah. Okay. And what where we got that money is CMRS had a, um, a lawsuit against track phone, and that <laughs> settlement provided us $12,143, I think it was. So we used that $11,000 out of that to pay for that. Now, how we're going to pay for it the next time, I have to get back with you. That was my question. <laughs> well, you know, I have some ideas about that. Kind of like uh, Sheriff Mattingly here. We, uh, I made some adjustments within uh, our scheduling. And what we've done is, instead of having 
12 full-time employees, we have 11 full-time employees, and I fill the other two spots with part-time. So that does kind of save me money. And that's where I'm going to hope that I can uh, get enough money to pay for this. I got my fingers crossed. I, I think I can do this. I I've got some other... I had to ask that question. Sure, and I've totally... I've, I've got that. Have you been trying to sell me that stuff? Or well, let me tell you, I can pay for it the next year. I, I figured this out because we're getting this new CAD. And with the new CAD, my first year of maintenance of $15,000 is already included. And that's paid for a grant. So that's another $15,000 that I have that I can pay for that a second year. And I'll just worry about the third year when the third year comes. Uh, at one time, they were talking like sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 for this whole county. Well, of course, I'm sure technology's gotten better. I'm telling you, Judge, there there are so many of those systems out there, and I've reviewed I don't know how many of them, to be quite honest with you, and the monies are all over the place. They really are. But you're right. The longer we wait waited now, the less they've gotten. Plus, we, um, MetroSafe up in Louisville, another communication center, uh, we're kind of getting in um, a regional concept with them, and that afforded us to get this at, less, at a lesser cost as well. Yeah, and I guess it would... For the manager's sake, it's, it's like if we have a uh, tornado coming through or, a, or an ice, uh, ice, storm, or ice storm or whatever. Yes, inclement weather, anything like that that we need to put out. Absolutely. Road closures. If you're out in the golf course, you're out hunting, whatever, I guess you're at home, but you got to yeah. sign up for it. You have to sign up for it. That, that's going to be the hardest yes. problem. And as I talked to Judge yesterday and Debbie expanded a little bit, we, our neighbors, our neighboring counties have become more regionalized with us. Uh, Shelby, Washington, Bullitt, uh, Jefferson, Elder. and Oldham. We're, we're working closely together both in the CAD systems and the warning systems, but um, the only real notification system we have today is our weather sirens. Our weather sirens are, are, are becoming aged and maintenance are up And they're just for outdoor anyway. And they're good for outdoor. So, you know, I think for the, the citizens at large, we, we have to be proactive and look at the next step of mass notification. Um, if, if you're not outdoors, how do you know other than having a uh, radio on or a weather, cha uh, weather band radio in your home, uh, not only severe weather, but a hazardous spill or anything else. So, uh, you know, when you look at your neighbors and they're already doing some of those things, I think it, it's upon us to, to move in that direction. And we have to come up with funding to make well, that happen. Maybe somewhere along the line you might sit down and talk to the school systems so they have the same They do. Mm -hmm. And tell well, how you could make it if you had one if you had one unified <clears throat> effort of everybody involved because I know they only have the students. Right, and I think they used the they one call system and I think one call was actually bought out by Code Red. Okay. I'm not hundred percent sure That's what they had with that. Yeah, and, and we have thought about that, to be honest with you. There have been some discussions along mm -hmm. the lines, and uh, the first thing that came up was the taxing entities and how, <laughs> those, are, how those are paid for through the school system. Uh, those of us with the old flip phones, will they still work? You'll still get a voice call. Get a voice call. And you get a text or a voice call? A, a text, text and a voice call, right? If you receive text, you yeah. can receive text. Even uh, with what Magistrate Lear did for us, I mean, that was... We, he just couldn't do the phone part of it, but we could get the text messages. And we did use email. Time. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, we did email. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. We did all three of them. It's pretty impressive <coughs> technology, the stuff that we looked at. Um, you know, they, they put a lot of thought in it. And We've been that's by far cheaper than the initial thing that we looked at before I did anything. It was, I think it was $20,000. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But it did, it did crazy stuff. I mean, it did a lot. Yeah. In the full picture, we're spending about nineteen thousand a year on our weather side. Of it, so, well, after two years, you said you might have enough funding for two years. Well, after the two years, can we tell how many people have signed up and oh, sure. see how long we'll it know is that right off. feasible? And I guess, yep. like I say, you may be able to piggyback with the schools. And well, what was Jefferson County what thirty percent? Oh, I don't even think. You mean to sign up? No, I don't think theirs was even that much. How long have they been? They've had it for quite a while. Um, I'd say you'd be lucky to get 10%. Yeah. I mean, that's just a wild guess, but you got to get people to do it. And people that haven't, uh, you know, have them cell phones, smartphones, and stuff, and more people do tell them to get more people there. Generation of change. And that's why we really need to put that out there, too. I feel like there's something in the newspaper, um, and we'll just talk it up as much as we can and try to help people. Especially older people. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, 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 that's a real issue. 
That's the main advantage of having a website. Be on the website. Yeah, website. Everybody, anybody can text or email, but yeah. our health care population doesn't have cell phones and stuff. So, uh, they do, they can't work on it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, if they get a voice call, they don't want to say land. What is it going to cost <laughs> for a person? It costs a lot. What are the people you calling, guys? Middle aged? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said the wrong thing. No, I didn't. I'm no it's sir. going to, if no. some money is going to have to come up no. some way, no, somehow sir. down the line. Right yeah, now, no. the dispatch board is absorbing the cost. No. It's, uh, the it's the it's are to <laughs> sign up is no cost. There's to no the cost to the subscriber. Zero. None. Jerry, I question this, and, and but again, we, we got to we do what we think is best for the next generation, too. It's not just what's good for today. But you did question that too? Oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> he drilled me. I usually get drilled once a week. <laughs> uh, and from a technology <laughs> standpoint, to have it have it uh, remotely located gives you an added sense of uh, of uh, redundancy. So if, if all the internet goes down here in Barstown, you don't have to rely on that. It's coming out of the rule for the stuff. Right. So, uh, you still get cell phones in. And things. It's, you know, to have it not centrally located here is a good, good, good idea too. Hmm. The automatic NOAA weather alerts that nobody, we don't even have to do anything on. No. That in itself is a is a plus. So like a weather radio. If you've got a weather alert, it comes across your phone. Your phone. Text. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So that that's automatic. I think almost all phones have that out there now. Yeah. Yeah, but this will automatically call you. And which is also, you know, another advantage text-wise for the um, deaf and hard of hearing community as well. They have something they can read now. So. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a challenge to get people to sign up. Yeah. yeah. If they don't have a, a good sign we'll, up. We'll, we'll have to depend on the Yeah, we'll ask for help for that, obviously. Thank I just wanted to let y'all know about it. No other business? Motion to adjourn. Made by Bernard Ice. Second by Jerry Hahn. All approved, say aye. Disapproved. Yeah.